Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview and also some benchmarks on these video cards from HIS. These are AMD Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition video cards. And this is HIS's Ice Q edition which means they have customized coolers. So first off we'll start with some specs from the box. So with the custom Ice Q cooler on this card it will run cooler and quieter and um, specs on our site are saying that the card will run on average 13 degrees cooler than the reference uh, than the reference cooler, and uh, well, the uh, level of noise generated should be uh, 28 decibels or less. Um, so it should be very nice, especially if you play games and watch movies. Um, down here at the bottom, some additional information. So you get premium customer support from HIS. This is an AMD-based Radeon graphics card. This is the gigahertz editions, which means that out of the box, uh, the, the core clock speed is 1 gigahertz or 1,000 megahertz. It's a PCI Express Gen 3 card, which means you get... Uh, compatibility with PCI Express Gen 3 platforms. That gives you effectively double the bandwidth available. Uh, the, this card, and actually no cards out right now, can even saturate the bandwidth available with PCI Express Gen 2. Uh, so bear in mind, you can still use this card with PCI Express Gen 2 or 2.1. Uh, you will just get a little bit of a performance boost if you happen to jump up to a PCI Express Gen 3 platform. You get two gigabytes of integrated GDDR5 memory. Uh, it runs at 1200 megahertz effective memory speed. That gives you 4.8 gig gigabits per gigabits per second of uh, memory speed, and uh, it operates on 256-bit interface. You also get some uh, high definition capabilities. So the outputs on this, uh, specifically the, the Display Port, uh, can do up to, for instance, 4096 by 2160. Uh, and then, of course, you also have an HDMI connector on there. Uh, there's some additional information on the back of the box here that I also wanted to point out for you guys. This is sort of a close-up of the heat pipe design of the card, which uh, I'll show you a little bit closer once we get to it. Um, but they use a heat pipe design to um, more effectively move the heat away from the GPU out to the cooling radiator and get that uh, heat outside of your case to keep the temperatures down and give you improved performance. Also keep the fan speeds down. Uh, the IceQ technology, we're going to get uh, back to that. It uses what they are calling a black hole impeller, which is their blower style fan. Uh, again, we'll take a closer look at that once we get out of the box. Uh, they have dynamic phase control, PWM ICs on there. Um, it's effectively high quality components uh, that's going to give you better performance, especially also extend the life of the uh, video card. Uh, it also says here that it's going to save you money on your electric bills by being more uh, energy efficient. You get full solid state capacitors, also solid state chokes, so they're uh, sticking with high quality components on the card um, to maintain its longevity. Down here you can see a bunch of the features, for instance, of the uh, Radeon HD 7000 series in general. It's the GCN architecture, it's based on a 28 nanometer manufacturing process. All these features are enabled by the card. Uh, specifically, I'd like to point out AMD Affinity support. You can do up to four displays out of this single video card, uh, so very nice to have that functionality. Also, all this stuff down on here on the bottom, as well as HDMI, DVI, and two mini display port outs. Next up, we will take the card out of the box. We'll show you everything that comes inside the box if you're going to be purchasing this particular card. You have protective packaging, of course. You have some information here telling you that if you're going to transport a computer, don't just, don't just leave the video card in. Take the video card out. That will protect it. That will protect the rest of the components of the computer. Also, making sure that you're installing in the proper type of PCI slot. Very, very important to make sure that you're doing that. Here's the video card itself. We're going to come back to it. And down here at the bottom, we have a few more accessories. We have an HIS. Let me hold that right side up. Uh, we have HIS. This is their iTurbo uh, software overclocking function. So it's kind of like an overclocking assistant. Uh, you can install and use that. Um, just so you guys know, I did some, for the benchmarks for this video, I did not use the iTurbo functions of this. But if you've never overclocked a video card before, and I can say that these video cards do have a lot of head, headroom, thermally speaking, they were staying quite cool. Uh, you can install that software and set yourself up with an overclock. Uh, also in here we have the HIS uh, general user's guide. Oops, I ripped it a little bit. Uh, you have here the actual driver disk, so it's got your catalyst drivers and everything. It's going to be uh, better to head over to the AMD website or the HIS website uh, to get the latest drivers for this video card. Um, but you can load them off the disk if you're setting this up and you don't have internet access or something like that. You also get sort of a basic multilingual installation graphics card manual right there. You also get an HIS uh, little case sticker right there you can put on your case. It's kind of shiny. HIS power up uh, if you're into the case sticker thing. And uh, that, oh wait, there's one more thing in here. 
Actually, there should be two more things in here, but I think I left one out. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find it. Anyway, uh, here is a DVI to VGA adapter. You get these with a lot of uh, video cards, but if you've got an older monitor that uses a D-sub 15-pin uh, VGA connector, you can use that to provide yourself compatibility. And the last thing that would be in here, that's a Crossfire bridge. Uh, so you can set up this card for a two-way Crossfire X, which I did. So here's a look at the HIS 7870 Ice Q itself. As you can see, the Ice Q cooler featured very prominently here uh, at the front of the card. We're going to come back to some of the cool um, ways that that works in a minute, but let's go over some of the basics first. Uh, here at the bottom we can see the PCB. Uh, the cooler does extend a fair length beyond the length of the PCB, but right here at the center, uh, or at least on the opposite side, is where the GPU would sit. Uh, again, this is the uh, 7870 gigahertz edition, so the uh, core clock speed of the GPU is 1000 megahertz. It has 1280 stream pr processors. It's based on the 28 nanometer, 28 nanometer manufacturing process, aka GCN, as developed by AMD. Down here at the bottom, we see our PCI Express Gen 3 slot. Again, uh, backwards compatible, it's 2 or 2.1. Over here at this end, we can see it is a two slot card when it comes to the PCI Express area or the PCI area, but if you can tell, looking back here at the back of the card, the cooler does extend a bit beyond that. So effectively what you have is a three slot card, and I'm going to do a demo a little bit later to give you guys a better idea of, of how this card actually fits when it's plugged into a motherboard. Looking at the back here, we can see the uh, upper slot is fully dedicated to exhaust, so most of the air um, that's being pushed this way by the Ice Cube cooler is going to exhaust out the back of the case, which is ideal. Uh, down here you have your display outs, so you've got your a couple mini display port 1.2 connectors, there's your HDMI connector, and then you have a dual link DVI out. Again, uh, using all four of these connectors, you can actually connect four displays and power four displays with a single card from your system. Flipping around here to the back, we can see we have a single uh, Crossfire connector right there, so you can set this card up for uh, two-way Crossfire X, which I did, so I'll, I'll have some benchmarks for that to share with you in just a bit. I uh, also wanted to point out, since this does have a slightly heavier cooler than most cards, they've uh, done some reinforcing here, so uh, running along this edge of the card, particularly right here where the coolers attach, uh, they have a metal beam, and that's going to provide some extra rigidity and support to the card. For power requirements, they're tucked away right under here. So you can see right there, there's two six-pin uh, PCI Express power connectors uh, for this card. So make sure you've got those uh, coming from your power supply to provide enough juice to run the card. And uh, that's about it for the PCB itself and the, the card in general. Uh, next up, I wanted to mainly focus on this cooler because this is uh, one of the sort of key points of the, this card. It's hard to miss. Uh, but the way it's designed is with the black hole impeller down at this end. And then if you look from the side, you'll notice there is clearance completely underneath this, this, uh, this cooler. So looking at it from this side, or why don't I say from the bottom, see those four screws, uh, the two here and the two down here? That's the only point where the, card, or where the cooler actually makes contact with the card. The rest of it is sort of suspended above it. So looking here from the back, uh, this blower style fan, which you see in a lot of, uh, of graphics cards, you'll see blower style fans. Um, but typically you only have the ability for the fan to pull in air from one direction, and that would be from the above right here. By actually raising this up off of the card, you actually have a fair amount of space under here for more air to pull in. Another cool thing is that actually you have a lot of your uh, power delivery stuff located uh, right along here, and that is going to also provide additional airflow for those to keep those cooler, and uh, generally speaking, uh, cool not just the GPU, but also the rest of the components of the video card. Now looking at the cooler from down at this end, you can see that the uh, blower style fan right here is actually completely enclosed along three sides. So what that's going to do is create positive pressure around this end of the card. It's going to direct most of that airflow this way, which is going to push it across the actual heat sink of the card, uh, across the, uh, the fins of the heat sink, I should say, back there, and uh, most of it is going to be ejected at, out the back of your case. Uh, now another nice thing about the heat sink here is they've actually included uh, four uh, heat pipes here. Uh, there's two in two different sizes, so if you look at it from this side, you can see uh, there's some skinnier ones that are here and uh, over here, and then some fatter ones. The skinny ones are six millimeters, the fatter ones are eight millimeters, and uh, those push down right on top of the GPU. They're going to evacuate some of the heat and distribute it throughout the uh, actual radiator fins, and then the air moving across there is going to dissipate that and eject it out the back of your case.
Next up, I wanted to do a quick measurement to give you guys a better idea of the length of the card and make sure it will fit in your case. Uh, the official specs on our website is going to say 11.69 inches in length. Um, I am measuring from the bracket right here, and I'm showing uh, a bit shorter than that. It's definitely shorter than 11 and a half inches to the end of the cooler right here. I put it at maybe at about 11 and a quarter. So um, give yourself at least 11 and a half inches of internal space within your case in order to fit the entire card. And uh, while I'm at it, I might as well flip it over here and do a measurement of just the PCB by itself. So the PCB on this card is actually oh, a little over nine and a half inches long. So uh, you can see that they've added some significant bulk with the cooler, uh, but I can say that that cooler is doing a very good job of cooling, which you will see in our benchmarks in just a moment. Uh, speaking of benchmarks, I did want to point out that when I was running this card with the single by itself, the hottest I got in any of my tests was 65 degrees Celsius. Uh, when I had two cards set up in Crossfire, the upper card, uh, which gets hotter in most Crossfire situations, only got up to 70 degrees Celsius max, and I was running uh, some high-definition benchmarks running 1920 by 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600. Now, I mentioned before that this is a two-slot card, but really more like a three-slot card. So um, just to give a quick demonstration on this motherboard, most motherboards, your top PCI Express slot is going to be where your, or where your video card is installed. A two-slot card would cover two of these slots. A three-slot card would cover three. So some motherboards, you have triple slot spacing, so uh, your next slot would actually be this one. On uh, some other boards, you have double slot spacing, so you, they would uh, have full-length PCI Express slots set up uh, in the first, third, and fifth slot. So this uh, board, I can actually kind of demonstrate both of those, at least when it comes to this card. So for instance, if we have the Ice Q7870 installed right up here at the top, uh, we can see that our PCI slot right here, the third slot, uh, it's still exposed a little bit, but it's definitely covered up to the point where I don't think a card could actually fit in there. Um, so do maintain triple slot spacing if you're going to be purchasing this card. If you're going to get a second one of these cards, and you want to install it triple slot space like that, um, you do have the benefit of a bit of an extra gap in between the two cards right here, so that'll provide a little bit more airflow between them to keep the air moving. If I flip it around here to the back, like so, you can see really where the benefit of these uh, these black hole impeller coolers is actually coming in because by sort of um, spacing them further away from the card, you have a fair gap here beneath, uh, well actually on both sides of the coolers, on both of these coolers to get plenty of air coming in, pulling in fresh air and directing it across the length of the cards to keep them cooled off. Now one last thing is if you don't have a triple slot spaced motherboard, such as this one, and you ha actually had to drop it one further down, like this, assuming, of course, that you have at least an 8-speed PCI Express slot um, in your fifth slot right there. You can do that, so if you have a, a spacing that's more like this, you'd still have a space in between. You could even drop another card in there, or that can just be additional airflow. And the crossfire bridge that comes with these cards is actually long enough that you can set it up in that configuration. And lastly, let's move on to our benchmarks. So here is a look at our testbed configuration. We were on a Z77 platform with a 3770K processor. So that gave us full PCI Express Gen 3 support. Ran through five different benchmarks and ran each benchmark at a couple different settings. Uh, we're running mostly 1920 by 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600. And then tested each card by itself as well as in a two card Crossfire X configuration. I want to point out specifically the temperatures uh, for these benchmarks that we ran. Also that the system was not an open air test bed. This is actually an enclosed system uh, with the side, side panel on and everything and sort of a basic fan configuration. With the single card setting, the hottest we got with any of these tests was 65 degrees Celsius and the fan speed at that uh, temperature was 47%. We ran, when we ran Crossfire, the upper card got a little bit hotter up to 70 degrees Celsius and the fan speed went up to 52%, but still very, very quiet, even at the hottest that the card got in any of the benchmarks. So those are our benchmarks, and I do want to point out one very important thing about the benchmarks that you guys were just looking at. These are the uh, Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition versions of these cards, and uh, the GHz edition, the core clock speed of the GPUs is 1000 MHz, or 1 GHz. Um, HAS also makes and overclocked versions of these cards. Uh, it's an IceQ Turbo version, and that one is clocked at 1100 megahertz or 1.1 gigahertz. These cards are supposed to be 1000 megahertz, 1 gigahertz, but when I actually installed them and ran them, 
they were running at 1100 megahertz, and that's without any additional uh, work on my part. I did not install any overclocking software, do any uh, changes to the Catalyst Control Center, anything like that. So bear in mind for those benchmarks that you are looking at uh, slight overclock speeds when it comes to the numbers that were reported. Um, I can't quite explain why, because these are definitely not the turbo versions of these cards, but maybe you'll get lucky like me and happen to get cards that are clocked to 100 megahertz higher than what they should be. That said, even with those already high core clock speeds, as you can see, uh, temperatures stayed well within range, um, 70 degrees again being the highest that we hit, and that was with a two-card configuration. That is going to wrap it up for this video, though. Uh, once again, this has been the HIS Radeon HD 7870 gigahertz edition with the custom ice Q cooler. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.